Hi everyone, so if you have been following my channels lately, then you might have seen that I managed to defeat Uber Lilith with my Hardcore Rogue. So I did this with a non-cheesy build, with Rapid Fire, which is not even the best non-cheesy build on the Rogue that can do that. And I had a ton of fun doing it, and I learned a lot of things about the fight. It took me around 200 attempts. Now you may ask, why 200 attempts on Hardcore? Well, there are two consumables that make that possible. Number one is the Elixir of Death Evasion, which is something I don't really like, but it's in the game, so it allows you to survive a one-shot, basically. And then there's a Scroll of Escape, that is a very rare drop-only consumable that you can find on Hardcore, where you can TP to safety. And this combination allows you to actually attempt the fight multiple times, a little bit like in Softcore. I'm saying that because, well, you're effectively very limited in your attempts on Hardcore, because those Scrolls of Escape are extremely rare, so they drop like maybe once an hour or so, so they're not really farmable, and you have to be very, very conservative and really make the best use of your number of attempts. Now, this won't really apply to most people watching this, but for me, it was definitely a very interesting challenge to try to beat the boss without an like, infinite amount of attempts. So my goal initially was 100 attempts, but I did need pretty much exactly 200, which also made me basically completely run out of these scrolls. <laughs> so that was like perfect timing when I killed her. I had like 10 scrolls left or something like that. So that was great. And well, I actually did manage to kill her basically twice in a row. So you might have also seen me trying to defeat her. And then I had to TP out because she was in her death animation, but she didn't die in time. And I was about to rip my character. And then I went in the next day and did her the first try the next time again. So that was great. So in general, I think I kind of nailed the mechanics of the fight. And I have learned a lot about the fight in general. So I did this basically completely blind. I did not really watch any guides before. Which actually led to me losing a lot of my attempts in phase 1 instead of phase 2. I only had roughly 50 of those 200 attempts that actually went to phase 2. So I had a lot more trouble with phase 1 because I had to learn all the patterns of the ways from scratch. And I did a lot of little mistakes in phase one in particular that led to me just retrying the boss a lot more than probably I should have. So uh, that was definitely the fun for me though. I really enjoyed just you know, going in and trying to learn everything by myself and you know trying to progress the fight like a real like raid in WoW or something like that. It was a lot of fun. So the first thing to know about this fight is that Lilith requires you to do everything well. So obviously you need to have a lot of damage, you need to have a lot of damage reduction, you need to have a lot of movement speed and mobility, and because there's a lot of positional requirements. You need to be able to, of course, deal with single target, and also with AoE, there are some adds that spawn that you do have limited time to kill, and you also want to bring some stagger, at least for the second phase. In the first phase it doesn't matter, but for the second phase, stagger is actually almost required, I would say, to actually be able to do it. So in the end, no matter which build you're using, you want to try to hit all of those check marks. Basically, you need to have like a really, really strong all-round build. Of course, you want to have good gear in every slot. I'm not going to go into the details of what that entails right now. Just look at the build guides. But for the most part, yeah, you need to have no wasted stats on any of your gear. You want to have perfect aspects. You want to have high item power weapons and these kind of things. And then come the actual mechanics of the fight. So while the regular attacks of Lilith are not really that dangerous and the adds are not really dangerous, you are dealing with a lot of one-shot mechanics. Basically all of those waves here are one-shots for almost every single character. I did manage to tank like two of them on my extremely tanky rogue under like the best circumstances. But again, this is kind of like a rare occurrence and only if you are really, really defensive with your build. So that was the case for me. I was actually running a very defensive setup because again I had these limited amount of attempts and I figured that if I make it as tanky as possible I have more room to learn the mechanics of the fight because I would fight here for longer. So that was kind of the idea and that actually helped me later on. But for the most part you cannot tank for example these waves, you cannot tank those skulls in the phase 2, you can definitely cannot tank any of this like ground effect stuff in phase 2. So there are various mechanics that just you have to dodge and you will die otherwise. Now, how do you go about dodging those waves? There are a few different patterns and you can actually learn them. And the most difficult part about phase one in particular is learning how to dodge those patterns. Because you can actually predict where the waves will come as soon as you see the first pattern appear. So you can see this here, for example, uh, I'm standing kind of close to the edge of the circle. So if you step outside the circle, you're dead. 
and you can only use this room to dodge. And for example, here we have a scenario where she spawns these opposite waves. Uh, so there's always two waves going through the center and then on the sides there will be two extra waves that you can see coming here from the opposite direction. So this is the opposite pattern and there is a similar pattern where all the waves go in the same direction. I can show this again here. So you just go straight through it and then she crashes down on the first one and then the second wave spawns there and the other waves just don't really do anything. The good thing is that you can actually stand pretty much almost entirely on the spot where these waves spawn. Now I know that a lot of people that have tried to fight complain about the hitboxes of these waves. They are a little bit weird, but if you understand what they are, then it's actually not so bad. So you have to know that the, the hitboxes or the collision box of these waves is very front loaded. So basically it, you see here that this is the wave, but it actually deals damage a little bit further outside in front of it. So this is what it seems to do. But on the other hand, in the back, it basically does nothing. You can almost like stand inside the wave here on the back side. So for example, if you have to dodge this one and you want to like you know, dodge to the side here to the right, you can actually kind of like dodge into the wave and you will be fine. And similarly to like when those waves spawn, you see here, this is where the wave appears. And basically the hitbox of the wave will, will start here. And even though the graphic shows a little bit more, you can kind of like stand here almost exactly where the wave spawns and you will not get hit because uh, of this like really front loaded hitbox. The second standard wave pattern that you can see a lot of do is the parallel waves. So this is exactly what I just mentioned. It's just like the previous one, but they're all in the same direction and not going in opposite directions. So you see this here, you have this one wave spawning down there. There's a second one in the middle, and then there's one on the side here and one on the side there. And you dodge it in pretty much exactly the same way. You just go straight for the middle. This is usually the easiest. Now this may not always be possible for you depending on where you are or maybe you're gonna see it too late like what kind of pattern it is you can actually dodge between those waves as well so depending on whether this is the opposite pattern or the parallel pattern you have to do this in a different way so for example you may see this thing spawn and you don't have enough time to get behind the second middle wave this means you have to start dodging between the waves so in this case this is the opposite pattern so you have one spawning here and one here and then you have like the other two coming from the right and in this case for example, if you're stuck in the middle here, you could uh, go to this side, you can like, evade to the top or to the bottom, let the second middle wave pass and then go back to the middle. You can kind of like do like a little like circle, so to say. So you see this here right now. So if you spawn this wave, she has like this one already spawned. And then you could go here to the top, wait for the second middle wave to spawn and you go back to the middle and you're safe again. And if the same happens to you on the parallel waves, it's actually even easier. So for example, here you have the parallel waves, you have like one, two, three, four spawning, and let's say you get stuck here in the middle, then all you have to do is like evade to one of the sides once the wave passes. And again, you can kind of like evade into a wave as it passes you because the hitbox is very front loaded. So you can kind of like just go into the back of a wave. So this is one way to do that as well. There are different ways to dodge these waves, but at least for me, this felt like the most consistent. So either you go straight through the middle, go behind the second middle wave, or if you cannot do that, you can you know either do the little circle on the opposite waves or uh, just going to the side, basically dodging into one of the waves on the side on the parallel waves. And if you have mastered those two wave patterns, then you have actually already masters most of the phase one fight because these things appear all the time and if you can dodge them consistently then you can progress on all of the other mechanics in this phase. Now there are some more wave patterns that you should be prepared to. One is this uh, really long wave here so she just does that randomly sometimes even at the start of the fight she can do that. It just appears here and there. It's essentially just like two waves next to each other that spawn in the direction that she's facing. So usually the way to dodge this is to just like evade right through it and just like stand behind it but in this case you see here there's no space there is uh, the edge of the arena so in this case you have to like try to find an empty spot just go to the side let it pass and you're fine so this is like one of the easy ones to dodge then there's one other special wave pattern that may be bugged that appears every time the first time she spawns the first round of ads so at 66 uh, percent and 33 percent she spawns some ads and on the first ads the first wave will be like a buggy pattern. So you can see this here. This is basically the opposite pattern that I just described earlier, but the middle waves are a bit scuffed. You see here, there's the first one spawning there, and the second one is not spawning like right behind it, but it's like a little bit to the side instead. So it actually covers a bigger area. And also those two like opposite side waves that come from the other side 
actually do not necessarily appear at the same distance. So it usually have exactly the same space every time she does the wave patterns. But on this one in particular, it's a bit RNG and there can be almost no space at all, even no space. I had like one attempt where I literally could not stand in the middle between those waves because she would do those two waves in the, in the center and then those side waves would actually be so squished together that there was no space in the middle and you actually would have to stand somewhere outside, you know, like on, on the edge of the uh, circle or something like that. So there's something to be aware of. This is like the one time that the pattern is not consistent and it can appear in various shapes. And then there are two more special wave patterns you can find in the last third of phase one. Here is one of them. This is the circle with um, the clockwise rotation. So basically what she does is she does like one huge circular slime on your position. And then there will be those uh, side waves going uh, around the edge of the circle, basically. So you can see this here in action. I mean, I run off screen now, but basically it has a circle. And then there's three waves, like a triangle coming around the edges of the circle. And then there's a second variation of this one. So again, you have a circular slam. You have to dodge out of this. And then you have these three opposite waves. So this is a little bit similar to what you saw previously with the opposite waves. But here you have to like dodge out of the circle. And then there is only one wave here and then two side waves going in the other direction. So the best way to dodge this usually is to, if you're fast enough, just go straight behind this middle wave and then you're safe or you would have to evade up and then evade behind the middle wave. So this is those two different options you can do. So you can see this here, I dash up, I go behind the wave and then you're fine. So this is not really too hard to dodge. Now there's one important thing that you see me do here in these clips, which is baiting the waves to the right spot. You can see here that before she spawns those waves, like as she disappears, I actually go to the edge of the arena and I also look outside of the arena. And this actually makes it so that these circles appear quite far outside. If you just stand in the middle, they will basically be like, you know, slamming down in the center of the arena, giving you almost no space to stand anywhere to not get hit by the circular slam. And it will also make it very, very difficult to dodge those other waves that come through, They're either like around the edge of the circle or through the circle. So what you can do by standing at the edge of the arena is that you bait it to the side and you see here, there's a lot of space now. There would almost be enough space to just stand here at the top and probably just have this wave pass right by me. But instead, I just you know dodge through the center, I go behind this wave, and I'm fine. And it's relatively easy to do if you can bait the wave to the side. So you can see this another time here. I stand at the edge of the arena, I wait for the wave pattern to appear, and as soon as that happens, I can dash around and you know I can go behind this wave and I'm fine. So again, this is like the opposite, like circular slam. And then in here, it's actually enough space to like stand on the side. I didn't even have to go through the wave. So sometimes there are multiple ways to dodge this. And the same story with this triangular formation. So again, I stand outside and then you see how much space there is here on the top right. So again, this is like a triangular formation. You don't see these other lines going like through the circle here. So this means it's a triangle. And actually, I think one wave is not even spawning here because it's probably like outside of the, the arena. You see there's like a line missing, but here's one. And then there's one here on the bottom that we cannot see. And in this case, you just go here to the top right and you have a lot of space just like standing there on the side and you can dodge that. Now, sometimes you may run to a situation where you don't have space for whatever reason. And in that case, if you want to properly dodge this entire formation, you need to get out of the circle and then behind one of the waves and follow the wave. So this would be the way to do it. If you, for example, stand in the middle somehow and you don't have time to go to the side, for example, you'd have to like immediately dodge towards one of the waves and then similar to the, the regular patterns, basically stand right behind where it spawns and then follow it along because like this, you will not get hit by the side wave coming from the other direction that goes basically exactly to where this one spawned. So that's it for all of the waves in phase one. These are definitely the hardest mechanic in the fight to learn, in my opinion. And this also took me the most attempts to really get down. It's all about like understanding which wave pattern you are facing, how to dodge it. And while the theory of it is not really too complicated, doing it in practice in like split seconds can be pretty tough. But again, you learn those patterns eventually. And again, there's like maybe a bit of RNG involved sometimes of like where exactly the waves appear, or sometimes you get a bit surprised by her doing a different pattern than you imagined. Or like what I mentioned with this kind of weird buggy pattern at the start of the first ad phase. So there are some of those. But generally, if you have those patterns like really memorized and you can consistently dodge those waves, you will get to phase two very, very consistently because it's really the hardest mechanic.
Now, unfortunately, this is not everything for phase one. There are some more mechanics. So let's talk about the ads and the blood boys a little bit. So when you fight Lilith, she spawns these blood boys here. These are these little, basically like the blood blisters from Nightmare Dungeons. And after exactly 10 seconds, they will pop and they will one shot you. So you have to make sure that they do not live longer than 10 seconds. Either Lilith spawns them or when you defeat any of those ads, they will spawn two of them. So you have to make sure that you don't necessarily just like blast down those ads immediately and then have these bad boys just like sit there until they explode. You have to make sure that you do this a bit in a timed manner. The ads are not really like dangerous or something. It's all about dodging the waves while you're fighting them. The ads do literally nothing besides these guys here that um, can hook you. So you see here that has like this hook, but they don't do any damage. They don't really, they're not really a threat. So it can really take a sweet time as long as you dodge those waves. And then you can, you know, defeat those blood boils in a controlled manner. This depends a little bit on your build. So in my case, I was playing rapid fire. I was really bad at dealing with those blood boils and with the ads in general, because it's mostly like a single target build. So I took it very slow and I did it very controlled. And I just, you know, for example, dodged one wave, killed one ad, dodged another wave, killed the two blood boils in the first ad. Then I dodged another wave, then I killed the second ad, I dodged another wave, and I defeat the Blood Boys again. So this is usually how I did it. And you can see this again here. So we are at 67%. She spawns the ads, and I try to like nuke one down. And then I dodge the wave, and I do exactly this pattern I just described. Try to get rid of the, one of them, dodge another wave. Uh, maybe here and there you can actually like get another attack in or so. And you see me always returning to the edge of the circle to bait the waves. So you can actually bait the waves not just on the circular pattern in the last part of phase one, but it also helps a bit for those regular rarities that she's spawning because she will usually spawn them kind of close to you. And then you can like much more easily just dodge through them and have like a very consistent dodge pattern if you stand at the edge of the circle. One thing to note here is that once you get her to 33% for the last part of phase one, when she starts doing those slams like this one, she will spawn three ads. These ads are less dangerous than the first ads. They don't have anything. They don't do anything. But again, you get those two blood balls every time you defeat one of those ads. And also Lilith will now consistently spawn two blood balls instead of one. So for example, uh, not in this dodge phase here, but after this dodge phase is over, you see there's two blood balls now from the ad. And Lilith will come down and she will spawn two new blood orbs. And you have to deal with them really quickly. And again, for example, she disappears again and you have to dodge again. So you have to make sure that you really nuke down those blood boils before they pop. And this covers pretty much the entire phase one. There are a few other attacks that she does. So you see here like this teleport, double swing, or like her normal attacks. And also this fire wave here that you can see here, these lines. Honestly, they are kind of irrelevant. You can just completely ignore them. They don't really do damage. At least if you're not like a full glass cannon, you can just not really care about them. So there is a bit of a soft enrage mechanic. You can see this here on the bottom. Those are the stacks here, and these are the blood boil stacks, and every stack gives you 1% increased damage taken. So if you take too long to complete this phase, or the second phase, you have the same debuff again, then you just take more and more damage. So you can't just go in with like an Omega tank character and just like fight her forever until she dies. You kind of have to balance out your damage with defense a little bit. But for the most part, her normal attacks don't really matter. And it's all about dodging those waves and making sure you don't get blown up by those blood boils. And then once you finish phase one, you have done probably the hard part already, in my opinion. But again, this might depend a little bit on your build and how well you can deal with the different mechanics. Again, for me, this was a major problem, those waves in particular in phase one, because it really took me a long time to learn all those patterns and really react to them properly. And phase two progression was actually relatively solid for me. But yeah. It also was like a lot of tweaking I did with my build. Like I actually changed my setup quite significantly from start to finish because, you know, I had issues with the ads sometimes. So I had to figure out how to deal with those. I had issues with my stagger sometimes. So I did something there and so on. So there was a lot of like tweaking going on with my setup. But in any case, you go to phase two and then you fight the real Lilith, the mother of mankind. And here there are a lot of different mechanics, especially with positioning that you need to be aware of. So the most important mechanic that you have to deal with in this phase are the blood puddles. So you see this here, she appears and then she spawns four of those puddles that are like a damage over time, slow zone. You can see this here. And there will be some dodge phases where each of those active blood puddles will also spit skulls. And those skulls generally one shot almost anyone. So they're like one of those one shot mechanics here in the second phase. You can survive them a bit more easily than the waves. 
with a very tanky character. I was actually able to do that here and there, but you should not really rely on that. So those blood puddles are what you have to deal with, and you can actually manage those blood puddles to your advantage in some way. So I'm going to show this in action here. So basically after every single mechanic, after every around 10 to 15 seconds or so, Lilith will spawn an additional blood puddle. So you see this here. So you just did a uh, circle on me. It looks like this. This is the animation when it spawns. And exactly as soon as you see the circle, you can already like evade to the side if you want. So you don't get hit and you don't take damage because it will already just appear in that position. Now, the thing is that those blood puddles can overlap and when one of them spawns near another one, so if the circle hits another one, basically, it will actually delete the other ones. And like this, you don't have the entire arena covered in these blood puddles. And instead, you can kind of like stack them on top of each other and you have a bit of a more controlled um, yeah, like fight and, and area to, to deal with. So I'll show you another example here. You see that there's like one here on the top right. And I deliberately walk up there into the puddle to make sure that she spawns it on me and spawns it on top of the other one. And see here exactly, it uh, appeared basically on top of the other one. And this new one eats the old one. You see the old one is gone and there's a new one there. And this is how you can prevent from the entire arena just getting covered in the stuff. And of course, she does break part of the arena as you go. And you can actually just like have her break off these corners where you have a lot of bottles stacked as well. So that the last platform is as clean as possible. Now, it's not always possible to bait these blood puddles exactly on top of each other. You see this here, for example, I'm like in a, stuck in this top left corner and I had to dodge off this uh, black ground effect there, the sweep, and then she immediately spawned the puddle on me. There was basically nothing I could do about it. I couldn't really go back to one of the others and try to stack it on top of each other. But again, I put it in a spot that will later be broken off. Like she breaks at first the top part of the arena and then the top right and then the top left. And then you have like, only this kind of like diamond shape little platform left at the end. So this one here will be broken off anyway, and this one will disappear later in the fight. And now you see this again, she does the next mechanic, which is like this uh, cleave, where she spawns like a clone, and then you cleave all the time, and then the big slam. And again, right after that, you can already get it ready. Go here exactly on top of this thing, and you see she spawns the next blood boils, and it will be eating up the, the other one as well. So like this, we only have three blood boils here, and it's like a relatively clean arena. And you're gonna see why this is so important because as I mentioned earlier, each of those blood puddles spawns skulls. So later in the fight, you see here, they have like this little like bubble burst animation. This is where the skulls appear and you have to dodge these skulls because they will generally one shot you. And if you have more of these puddles everywhere, they will not spawn more of these skulls, but they will appear from a lot of different directions and it becomes quite difficult to dodge them. So best case scenario, you have like two or three of these puddles and you can kind of like dodge between those skulls and it's not really that difficult. But then you have like seven of them spread out in every direction, then they will come out, you know, fly in from everywhere and it becomes very, very difficult. And essentially every time that little flies off the platform to do a sweep or sometimes after a certain amount of time, you see here now, for example, it will start spawning these skulls again from those blood puddles. So this is the reason why you want to stack them and make sure that not the entire arena is completely covered in the stuff on top of it being like an AOE slow and damage over time zone. So you also just don't want to stand in it. You know, if there's like stuff that slows you down everywhere, you might have trouble actually dodging the other mechanics. Now there's one other helpful mechanic about those blood puddles though, which is that when you stagger Lilith, one or two of them will disappear. You can see this here right now. I staggered her and you see here at the top left, this one just disappeared. So every time you finish a full stagger on Lilith, she will actually clean up the platform a little bit for you. You can see this again here. So this is another stagger that I did. And you see this one here just disappears. So this is how you can also clean out the platform. I'm not sure if there's like a pattern to it. It seems kind of RNG which one it chooses or if it's one or two. So I think Sanderson can clean up two at the same time. But yeah, for the most part, if you stagger her more, you will have a cleaner arena. And then you can try to stack all of the remaining blood puddles into the same spot. And maybe it's even like a spot where yeah, it's just, you know, it's just broken off and you have like a much easier time dodging the stuff. Now let's talk about the other mechanics that she has in phase two. One is the suck in. So this looks like this. She does like a swirl and then she pulls you in. You can actually avoid being pulled in by being unstoppable or with a really timely dodge. So you see this here, for example, with dash, I was able to not get sucked in, but generally she pulls you to the center right on top of her and she does quite a bit of damage. So if you're very squishy, you might actually just die from this but it's not really one of the most dangerous mechanics. 
as long as you get out of the slam that she does at the end. So she, you see here, she does like this circle, and then she does like a big slam, and this slam would definitely one shot you. And while doing so, she also spawns five of these adds. You see they have very little HP, it's like maybe 2 million, 1 million, or something like that, but there's five of them, and you have to defeat them rather quickly, because these adds, if they live long enough, and then Lilith goes off to do like a sweep of the platform, and the skulls start appearing, those adds will also spawn skulls that follow you. So you definitely want to make sure you get rid of them in like maximum 10-15 seconds or so. But compared to the first phase, there's no like blood boys spawning, there's nothing crazy going on, you just like blast them. It's not really such a big problem. Even for my build that was like, yeah, not good against adds, it was fine usually. So now one problem with the suck in is that she can actually pull you straight through those skulls. You see this here, for example, there's all of these skulls following me and now she's going to pull me in. And, well, there's a skull, so she would pull me exactly into that skull and you would die. So, this is where you have to do either something like this dash here, or you have to bait the skulls a little bit to the other side, and then maybe get sucked in from the other direction, or you have unstoppable when you build. You can do this with many different ways, but you have to be aware that those skulls can hit you when you get sucked in in exactly the wrong path. So, you have to make sure that this doesn't happen. The next mechanic that Lilith does is the cleave. So you see this here, she screams. This is the cue that the cleave is starting. It knocks you back, it slows you for like a second or so. And this is when you have to start running. And this is when she starts doing those cleaves. You see this here, it's like a, a triple attack. And she spawns like a shadow of herself that uh, does some of these cleaves while she also follows you to try to swipe you. And then at the end of that, after three cleaves, she does like this big circular slam AOE that will absolutely one-shot you. So you have to make sure that you kind of like run a bit of a circle. It's relatively easy to dodge this one, but it's also a bit inconsistent. Like I have not really found like a really predictable way of dodging it besides just running like a huge open circle. So you can see this here again. Usually I just like dash to the opposite side of her or so. And then I just did like a really large circle and he would, she wouldn't miss you. So yeah, again, it's a bit hard to predict because this cleave actually does damage by the time that the animation starts. So this line is actually irrelevant. You can just walk through it, it doesn't matter. Uh, she will hit you when you are in the wrong spot at the wrong time. So for example, if I was standing here and she does the cleave, even though it's like a wave extending, so to say, you see this here, it's like, you know, kind of coming towards you. Like it already deals damage on the entire line. So if I was standing here instead of here, I would take damage already. And the same with this here. If I was down here, I would already take damage. So this is something to be aware of. You basically just need to like walk the circle properly and you will dodge it. It's not exactly hard to do, but there is an empowered version of this in the last platform. So uh, just fast forwarding this a little bit. She does this cleave animation as well every time she enters the last platform. And here, instead of three cleaves, she will do five, but she still does a slam in the middle. You see here, there is like another cleave going off and then there is another cleave going off after the slam. So you just have to be aware of that, at least on the last platform, this is extended by two extra cleaves, and you have to keep dodging while also avoiding the big circular slam. Now let's talk about uh, sweeps and breaking the platforms. So she always breaks the platforms in the same order. It's always the top part, then the top right, then the top left, and then you're left with the last diamond-shaped small platform at the end for the last phase. She does this at certain HP thresholds. So the first break is at like 80, 85% or so, and then the second one is like around 60, 65 or so. And then the third platform break when she goes to the last phase is like around 30% HP or so. So whenever you reach those HP thresholds, she will become unstoppable, she will fly away and she will break off one of those platforms. And when doing so, she does like this big sweep where basically the entire arena becomes covered in this black stuff. And you see here, that uh, after around a second or so, you have this fire extending from the center towards the sides. So the black stuff actually doesn't hurt you. You can like walk through it, it doesn't matter. You see here, she comes down there. You can just walk through this black stuff, it doesn't matter, but as soon as this fire appears, you are dead. So this will basically one-shot you, there's like no way to survive that. And in this case, you have to be off this black stuff. And there's always gonna be a little bit of a safe spot somewhere on the side. So in this case, you see that uh, she disappeared and then you see her flying down from the top to the bottom, which means she covers everything behind her and in the direction that she is going, there will be a safe spot. 
This is the same for any other direction she might be going. So you see now she disappeared again. And now she comes from the bottom to the top and the top will be a safe spot. And this is actually a platform break. So I got her to like 80% or something and the platform break appears. And on this platform break, you see that the skulls also start spawning. So this is kind of connected. So you see here when she just did a normal sweep, at least in the early part of the phase two, there is no skulls appearing. So it's relatively easy and you can just like keep DPSing her. But then when she does a platform break, she will always spawn skulls. And also as you progress in phase two, she will start spawning these skulls more frequently. So as she has lower HP, uh, these skulls can also start appearing when she does other mechanics or just like a regular sweep across the platform, even when she doesn't break off a part of it. So there's something to be aware of. And again, when these ads are alive, when she starts spawning skulls, those ads also will spawn them. So make sure you get rid of those ads. So a few tips here for avoiding those skulls when she breaks the platforms. So you see here that there's actually a really long delay before anything ever happens to the center of the arena. You see here there's a the black stuff and the black stuff doesn't matter. It's only the fire that matters. And you see here that at this point, when she starts this platform break animation, it will also spawn the skulls. And you can actually kind of like take your round, you know, around somewhere on the side or so to bait the first skulls into a different direction because there's still like another one or two seconds before this fire ever appears. So you can actually like really take your sweet time here and then enter this breaking platform really late. And after like another around two seconds or so, the platform is cleared again and you can use it to dodge those skulls. So instead of just like immediately rushing up to this breaking platform here and then having all the skulls already flying around there you can actually wait a little bit then go on it and then after like a second or two actually go towards the center again so you don't actually have to like run around there for like five seconds on this breaking platform by the way the timer for this is i think exactly six seconds every time she breaks a platform and you will die if you stand on this you will also die on hardcore even with your elixir up if you stand on this platform when it crumbles so make sure you don't do that and you have to be aware that her patterns can change a little bit. So you see this here, for example, that now that the first part of the platform is broken off, she will usually do a sweep from like the bottom left to the top right or from the bottom right to the top left. So kind of like diagonal across the platform. So you just have to be aware that, yeah, she just comes from a different direction and it can change exactly how you have to move a little bit. But generally, it's always the same pattern. So here she does this sweep again and then the fire. And in this case, she didn't break the platform, so there was no skull spawning. But now when I progress a little bit further, you see here, like 55% or so, she will start breaking off this top right part of the platform. And again, you don't want to enter it too early, and then you want to go back to the main platform as fast as possible, so they have more space to dodge those skulls. And you see here, what I did, for example, is you can either just run like a really large circle around the edge of this uh, corner and then go back to the platform or you can like dodge in between them so for example you can run a little bit like an eight pattern and kind of like dodge between the skulls but this depends exactly on where the skulls spawn and you know how many puddles you have so it's always a bit rng like how exactly it looks and where you need to go but generally the hitboxes are not really crazy on these skulls, so you can also like dodge between them and you can dash between them and these kind of things. And it usually works. And again, after every mechanic she does, after every platform break, after every time she does like the cleave attack, after every time she does this uh, circle suck in, she usually spawns more of these blood puddles. So make sure that after every mechanic, you kind of go next to one of them if you can. Here, for example, it wasn't possible. She just spawned it here and there was no way to go really but you want to make sure that you stack those puddles as much as possible to keep the arena clean. And here you see towards the end, the fight intensifies. This is what I mentioned earlier. Even when she does not break the platform, she will actually start spawning these skulls now. You see this here, she does the sweep and then there's the skulls everywhere. And for example, here you have to go to the bottom right. Sometimes you have to go to the top left. And in both cases, you will have to dodge the skulls while also dodging the sweep. And you see what I did here? I, I waited for her to appear and I checked where she's coming from. And I also try to stay on this black stuff a little bit longer just to give those skulls a bit more time to like fly around and not really just have them come after me as I stand in this like tiny space here. Because sometimes you just don't really have enough um, room to maneuver and dodge those skulls, especially on the last platform. So speaking of which, here's the bla last platform break. So again, she comes from the bottom right, goes to the top left, she breaks it off. And you see again that I use this opportunity to really go far down, do like a really large circle you see this and kind of bait all these skulls that are already spawning 
somewhere into nowhere basically while I get a bit of room here to dodge around the top part of the platform. So I can show this again. So I go down, like all the skulls follow me and they have like a really slow turn animation. And then for example, here's like a few more coming and I just need to stay on the platform for like two, three seconds and then we can uh, let her break it off and we go to the center. And if you do this maneuver successfully, you will be on the last platform in this last phase. And this is when the fight is almost over but it's also the most intense. And for the last platform, she seems to have a relatively scripted moveset. I think she always starts with the scream and then the cleave animation. And in this case, you see that there's not really that much space on this platform. You have to make sure that you bait her third cleave somewhere into one of the corners, because if you're in the center, she'll basically cover the entire platform and you cannot stand anywhere without getting hit by the 360 degree AOE here. So you see that? So I have to make sure that the first three attacks lead you to a corner. So you basically just want to go around basically the edge of the arena, but sometimes there might be puddles. You might not be able to just like walk through them because they slow you and these kind of things. But you have to be aware that the third hit is the one that produces the big slam and you want to make sure that the big slam does not land in the center. And again, she keeps spawning these blood puddles and those blood puddles will still keep spawning skulls. And you want to make sure that you mostly fill up the center of the platform because most of the mechanics can be more easily dodged at the sides of the platform. In some cases, he also does the sweep again. You have to stand on the side. So just put everything you can into the center. You see this here right now. I tried to like stand in the center and I got a bit unlucky. It goes to the side there. But generally, you want to have the blood puddles in the center of the small platform and not on the sides because you need the space there. And you see here that basically every mechanic now starts spawning skulls. Even when you have to dodge the cleaves, you see here that uh, she starts spawning skulls a little bit. And if you have any ads left over, they will start spawning skulls, etc. And finally comes probably the hardest mechanic in the fight, which is the double sweep. So you have only this tiny platform, you have to dodge the skulls, and she disappears to do the sweep. But she does it in a cross. So she does one from like the top right to the bottom left right now, for example, as you can see here. And then she disappears and immediately does a second one. And here the timing of when you move from the black of to the safe side and then back to the center and then to the other safe side is really crucial because as you can see there's like almost no safe spot here at all it's only this like tiny strip of like a, a safe area and this doesn't really give you room to maneuver to dodge those skulls you see here there's like nowhere to dodge this skull for example like it just comes after me and i cannot dodge you know, to the top for example because it's still covered in the fire so you have to make sure that you bait those skulls somewhere away and stay on the black uh, platform as long as possible, go to the side for as little as possible, and then again stay on the black for as long as possible, and then again stay on the side for as little as possible. So it's like a very hectic maneuver you have to do here, and it's definitely the one thing that requires the most practice in my opinion in this last phase here. So this is definitely where I failed most of my attempts, uh, like many of my phase 2 attempts actually went all the way to like, you know, 20%, 10% to the last platform, etc. Once I had that down, how to actually enter the last platform uh, successfully, I almost always failed because of this double sweep. So I can show this again here. I'm going to do some slow motion, actually, when uh, she disappears. And I'm going to show you how it is. So here you have the unsolvable animation. She flies off. The skull starts spawning. And now you have to wait and see where she actually appears and which direction she's going. So she's coming from the top right. And I see this and I immediately move away from the safe spot because if I go there already, I will just fill up everything with skulls and there's no way I can survive there. So instead, I bait the skulls away, as you can see, and then go down to the safe spot. And even so, I still tanked all the skulls, but uh, luckily I was uh, tanky enough to actually survive it. And then she does the second sweep, and you see here that yeah, most of the skulls have disappeared now. You go to the safe spot, and you are fine. So it's mostly about dodging the first one properly. The second one usually doesn't have that many skulls anymore. You can kind of just like move over to the safe side but yeah it always comes a bit down to like where do the skulls appear for example you might have one of these blood puddles here that is like exactly on you know on the on the side here that is one of the safe areas for example if this one was down here in this corner and starts spitting out skulls in like a straight line to me it would be very very difficult to dodge you would only have like a few steps you can like kind of like walk up here maybe go around the skull and then comes the next skull and you have to do the same thing again and there's other skulls coming so Sometimes the arena might just be like in a really bad state to make this like almost impossible. But for the most part, you have to make sure you bait the existing skulls as far away as possible. 
by just you know going onto the black platform and then going to the save area as late as possible. And that is also all of the mechanics for the fight. So in this case, on the last platform, you just have to remember very little space, double sweep, and you have to quintuple cleave instead of the triple cleave. And if you can handle all of the stuff, you can defeat a little of in the last phase. I tried to make this guide as comprehensive as possible. I understand that even with a guy like this, and even with a really strong build, probably most people will have really huge trouble or never defeat Lilith. And I think that's kind of the beauty of the fight. But it's definitely a really cool challenge, in my opinion, where you can you know, test yourself, you can learn the mechanics. A lot of the stuff is kind of scripted, and you can you know understand how to dodge certain mechanics as you go. So for me, uh, as I was progressing the fight, I definitely saw continuous improvement in my attempts. I managed to get further and further, you know, almost every single time. And of course, sometimes you go back to like making like a noob mistake and <laughs> your fight ends after like 30 seconds in phase one. But another time I go back and I do like, you know, a 20% phase two attempt. I do another 20% phase two attempt. Then I do like a 15% attempt. And eventually I kind of like worked my way closer and closer towards the finish line. As I learned more of the mechanics, as I understood how to dodge certain things, and yeah, you just have to like work your way through each of the mechanics until you have them basically muscle memorized. So that was a really fun challenge, I gotta say, and it was really great to see that Blizzard can actually make cool boss fights in ARPG. And it has been a while since we had one of those. And I really hope that we're gonna get a lot more stuff like this. And maybe they could even consider making some kind of like medium version of Lilith as well, I imagine, where it's not as crazy with the one shots everywhere and these kind of things. That might be something for them to consider as well. But in any case, if you're still trying Uber Lilith, then I wish you good luck. I really hope that this helps you. And well, otherwise there's season one, there's some power creep. It might help you as well. In any case, hope you like this video and I'll see you guys next time.